Hi folks, welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis, and I wanted to do another installment of herbal preparedness. Uh, I think, like I said before, this is an extremely important thing for those of you that want to stay prepared to do. Um, it just seems logical to understand the plants that grow around you and how to utilize the medicine that's in them uh, and the nutrition level also. Not just you know plants that you can grow in your garden but what grows around you it's very very important the and it's not just my opinion if you look at most schools uh, most herbalists they will all say this the most important thing about learning plant medicine is identification uh, that is is absolutely vital you know the actual mixing uh, you know taking an herb and, and turning it into some type of you know usable medicine to intake in your body somehow is not really very difficult uh, it is is learning to identify what it is that you're harvesting uh, whether it's what you need or maybe it's you know very deadly either way that is very crucial for you to to understand and I would suggest uh, start learning if you don't already know some of the basics of just you know plant botany of, of how you know a botanist would identify a plant because in most of your really good uh, plant field guides and identification guides that's how they identify them because uh, one of the most important things to learn is that there's nothing that's like you know absolutes or at least there's very few absolutes when it comes to identifying a plant or how a plant grows or how the medicine in the plant works uh, it's much like any other living creature uh, you have some kind of guidelines to kind of help guide you to what that plant is or what it can do but know that there's no absolutes really and what I mean by that is I you know you may have a a, a plant that has a flower that's violet with five petals on it and what your book says well you know it's supposed to be kind of pink and it has six petals or maybe it's more blue with four petals or something like that um, it could all still be the same plant uh, that's just just how it is there are more markers than just color or number of petals or things like that you know you usually um, try to f find at least you know three to five markers on that plant that agree with your your identification guide before you kind of know that okay that's most likely the same plant uh, because depending on what region the plant grows in you know the just the local conditions um, there could be a slight mutation in that plant or it's just decided you know to sprout a slightly different color of flower or whatever uh, there's a lot of reasons why plants slightly change their appearance and stuff so understanding the basics of you know the like a plant anatomy uh, you know how a flower works what what are the details of the flower you know the the petals the the pistil the sepal you know all these different things in a plant of what they are now instead of me uh, taking my less than expert uh, knowledge and trying to explain it to you I'm going to leave some links to some really good videos I have found that do that for you uh, and also some books out there that that are uh, you can read that will explain to you how that works and most of these videos and stuff are they're 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 for people like you and I the, you know the commoners you know not PhD people uh, so that you can kind of understand what they're talking about and if you have that basic knowledge it's very easy at that point to start identifying just a plant that you've never seen you know you you're, you're walking through the woods or through the field and you come across this plant you've never seen it before you have no clue what it is so how do you identify it you know there's a lot of yellow flowered plants out there uh, so there's you know understanding how the stem is and how the leaflets are things like that uh, are very important in identifying it and I feel that you'd probably be better off learning from someone that knows more than me and can explain it better so I'm gonna leave some links for that um, it's also important because you need to know what plants to stay away from there are plants out there the sun's gone down and starting to get dark 
I tried shooting this video earlier. I thought it was a nearly perfect video and then realized that my camera never recorded it. So I apologize. And now it's starting to get dark. Um, it's important to know what plants uh, to stay away from. And there are plants out there that will absolutely kill you. Uh, in my area, three number ones to watch out for are poison hemlock, water hemlock, and foxglove. That's possibly the same in your area, but it could be different. So you need to check with, I would suggest, like your state conservation department or whatever department is similar to that in your state. They typically um, put out field guides, pamphlets, have uh, websites that tell all that. I know my state, Missouri State Conservation, uh, they put out an excellent website with a lot of information on that to help guide you in what things to stay away from, plants, mushrooms, that sort of thing. Um, what I would highly suggest is until you get your identification skills down pretty good, stay away from anything that even resembles um, you know, a poisonous plant. For instance, in Queen Anne's Lace, you know, is similar looking to poison hemlock in some ways. But if you aren't absolutely sure you can identify the two, then don't be harvesting Queen Anne's Lace. A foxglove is very easy to identify when it's in bloom. The flowers are extremely unique and beautiful. But when it's not in bloom, uh, the leaves look like several other types of plants and can easily be mistaken and you can die from eating it. So, you know, I'm not trying to scare you, but in a way you do need to have a little bit of healthy fear about that. Um, you need to pick a few plants that you either already know or that you know are very common in your area that you feel you can identify and begin to work with those plants and get to know them really well. I'll work on putting out a video of some suggested plants to start off with um, so that, you know, you can kind of get you going. And you know, you do need to get to know them. A lot of herbalists use the term of building a relationship with your plants. And that doesn't necessarily mean like some new age frou-frou stuff. What it means is that you actually get to know the plant. You, you've, you get to know it so that you know what it looks like in all, its, all of its stages of growth. It's, it's stages of, of blooming, of fruiting. Uh, you know what it smells like. You know what it tastes like. You know how it works medicinally. You know it very, very well. You know, it's kind of like a best friend. You know how that plant works. When you, ha you know, develop that kind of relationship with it, then you feel very comfortable uh, going out and harvesting it and using it in your daily life. And that's what you need to do, you know, and, and start developing those relationships with the plants around you and picking a few. You don't have to have a lot, you know, three, five or so like that to start off with that you know really well and that at all stages of its growth you can identify what it is and you know how it works. Um, and so that is, that's crucial to, uh, you know, you know, identification and developing your skills as an herbalist. So, you know, remember your identification, it, that's, that's absolutely critical. You, you must uh, identify, man, sorry, I'm losing light out here fast. <laughs> See if I can make it a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's very crucial to, to, do, to be able to identify those plants. Uh, and you want to be able to go out there. It's, it's not the same as in, you know, growing it in your garden. That's good. That's fine. I grow a lot of things, a lot of herbs in my garden. But you also need to know what grows around you because there's a lot of plants around you that you may not be familiar with but are absolutely excellent uh, and have great nutritional and or medicinal value to them. Another thing to consider with plants that grow and why I always encourage people to just look at what grows wild around you. Um, from an SHTF perspective, you may not have the plants that's growing wild, the, the seeds to grow the, the plants that you want. So be aware of what grows wild around you because most likely they will be there. Um, then there's also the, a wild plant, a wild herb typically is going to have stronger medicine or the volatile oils in it than a, you know, cultivated one because it's, you know, it's had to grow in the wild. It's had to suffer through, you know, competing plants and, and, and you know, pests and animals that would eat it all on its own without your help. So it's going to be a tougher plant. So typically the the medicines in it or the volatile oils are going to be stronger. 
There's also some theories out there, I've seen a little bit of research to back it up, but I tend to agree with it, that the plants that grow around you are going to have uh, the medicines m well more suited to combating the things that you're dealing with in your area. And what I mean by that, it's kind of like the, what you hear, some of you might have heard, you know, you need to buy honey that's that's raised locally because it's using the flowers that are grow around your area and it can help with things like allergies and stuff. It's kind of on the same line of that. Um, if you're harvesting a plant to make, say, a bug repellent to repel the bugs in your area, that plant, you know, it has already, it, it lives with those bugs and so the bugs are going to be familiar, familiar with that plant and, and and already be used to being repelled by it. Whereas if uh, you buy a plant that's grown somewhere else, it's very possible that the chemical compound is just slightly different and it may not affect the bugs uh, that grow around you locally. Um, this has also been said about um, you know, bacteria and, and, and viruses and stuff. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of scientific evidence behind it, but it does make sense. Um, so, plus they're, they're wild, so they're a little bit stronger anyways. So I tend to try to focus on, uh, first, local growing plants. Doesn't mean that you can't get stuff that doesn't grow local or things that's growing from on the another side of the planet. Um, but you need to know what's growing locally around you because there may come a time that that's the only thing you have access to is what's growing locally. Um, so focus on those things and you know I, I'm trying to remember what I said in the last video and I'm trying to hurry up because it's getting dark out here I'm sorry this is awful I, I was all excited because I when I got done recording I thought man that that was a good one yeah I think people are gonna like that and then guess what it didn't record um, so much for a really cheap phone uh, what I want to do is try to come up with videos to get you guys ready for when spring actually hits that you'll be ready to get out there and start harvesting and start you know making medicine so we have a few months for that I understand some of you probably can live in areas that there's still stuff growing green but around here it's not um, it, you know again I think that plant medicine is something that the prepper community has missed the, and I'm not saying that they all have because I know there's plenty that that know all about it but in general terms the prepper community has missed it um, it's not some kind of cracky new age stuff don't don't even start to think that because this is this is how we've treated ourselves for thousands of years it is absolutely vital that if you want to be prepared and self-sufficient that you know what grows around you and you know how to use it in the different ways so uh, you know again I'm not an expert I'm not a teacher really this is kind of the first time I've done this kind of thing so if you have your suggestions please let me know I'll try to work them in and, and come up with some good videos to kind of guide you guys and gals down this path and and help you as much as I can of developing those skills as a family herbalist for now and for when the SHTF happens um, I just I think it's it's a lot better you know my my family they <laughs> even my little one you know she hurts herself you know she wants me to get my salve or get a plant and leaf and put on it or something like that uh, they they already that's it's kind of already in their heads if that's how we treat ourselves around here so I'm sorry for kind of the really dark video and kind of jumbled up because of my camera issues uh, but anyways, remember, identification, absolutely vital. You need to focus on that a lot and really get good at it um, because you could make yourself ill or even kill yourself if it's the wrong plant. Um, so before you really kind of take this any further with harvesting from the wild, you need to know what you're doing. All right, now that you can't see me, maybe that makes it better. You don't have to look at my ugly mug. Anyways, uh, thank you guys and gals for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.